Greetings and salutations, friends. It's time for some more Adapt Dragon View. I think we're on episode four now. If you guys saw the previous episode, or if you missed it, we defeated Ifrit in the Fire Cave and got the Fire Ring. Now we're going to talk to Molester Monk over here. The monk considers your tale of the Ring of Fire. Yes, perhaps you are right. The ancient Ring of Fire may melt the ice pillars. You may need this map. Please take it and be careful. Got the snow map. I really like this next area. It's It reminds me of Daggerfall a little bit with the snow effect. And it's, I don't know, I always like snow levels anyway. I think a lot of people do. And there's something you always tend to see in these old games anyway. But... And it's not even really right because it's kind of like curved, so I don't know, but I like it anyway. And in this cave we're going to pick up an item as um, Alex there walks in rather awkwardly with his like fists clenched. I guess he's going to fight that bitch in the robe over there. And we're going to get some hit points. There's a few things scattered around this area that we're going to collect. Um, just so we can go into the Ice Fortress as strongly as possible. And um, I'm not going to talk to her, but that chick over there, or dude, I don't even know. That, that androgynous individual is, um, I guess, a healer, and they save your game for you. And that's cool, except they charge you 50 Jade every time they do it. And... In this game, that's a lot of money. So I, I actually make the trip back to Kazdra to save and heal because I ain't got no 50 J. I don't, I don't apparently have any navigational skills either as I'm walking into those rocks. There's an upgrade for the Hawza. Oh, and I, I actually did take the time to look up the name of the fucking boomerang thing that I was calling the Huaza, because I thought it was like maybe a Chinese or Japanese word or something. It's actually Hua... Uh, ah, now I'm fucking it up again. It's actually Huaza. It's a uh, it's last name, apparently. So I guess for some reason they called it that. I don't know. It, this was a strange time in gaming, I guess. But that's what that thing's called and it's how it's pronounced. I'm just going to call it the boomerang. But here's our upgrade. We have a nice gold fucking boomerang. And as we can see, Alex, as usual, is always very happy to get a better weapon. I guess I would too. Yeah, so I wanted to quiet down for a minute and soak in this fine music. And so much for that because we're going to go play the chest game. If you guys remember that fruit I was picking up, I think in episode two, that stuff has a use. You can give it to the robed individual, that's what we'll call them. And they'll let you play the chest game, which is kind of like the chest game in Legend of Zelda. I'm sure that was a thing in one of those Zelda games from the past. I know it was something they had in Super Mario Bros. 3. The great thing about this one is you can get things like potions very cheaply for just 10 fruit. And you're given a, um, a magic point container, whatever the hell they call it every time you play it for the first time. Does that make sense? Every time you play it for the first time, whatever, I'm going to go with it. But yeah, that's what you get. That's what you get from it. Um, I did play through this several times, so to me that statement made sense because I was testing to see 
if I would always get a magic container when I opened a box, regardless of what box I opened. And it just seems that the game's like, yeah, here, this is your first time playing the chest game. Have a magic container. That's what I was trying to say there. And there's one last goodie over here. Um, we do have to fight some of these bastards who look like... They, I think they're supposed to be ice golems. They look like cheap ripoffs of, like, Megatron or some shit. They're shitty Transformers, that's what they are. I don't know why I was doing that. I think I walked into the spikes and I was like, oh shit, I lost life. I'm gonna try to get that other heart, and then I took even more damage because the invincibility wore, wore off. It wasn't as stupid as it looked, I guess. Maybe. But, uh, probably still kind of stupid. And we got more magic points, which is good because magic's actually really useful in this game. I didn't do it because I'm trying to save magic for the stage, but if you hit those ice guys with a firebolt, you will kill them. And I did get an upgrade for the fire ring. I didn't put it in this episode because I thought, well, it would run too long. It's only a 19 minute episode or 18 minutes, so I, I was wrong there. But um, I did go back to the fire mage from an earlier episode and talk to him to get the upgrade. He didn't have anything good to say anyway. So we're finally going to go to the Ice Fortress. Um, it's not the most exciting of stages in this game. It's okay though. I do like the music in here as well. We'll take a moment to listen to it. So yeah, another cool song, this game's full of them, um, you know, the fire ring kind of does what the scale does in the, uh, in the fire cave. The puzzles in this game are alright, they're not amazing. I don't know, I feel like this game is, like, kind of a better Legend of Zelda 2 in some ways. It's very similar to it. It has kind of an action RPG thing going. It has the, the puzzles and level ups and even magic and stuff. But it's a little bit better executed than Legend of Zelda 2, which is kind of funny. I know a lot of people don't like Legend of Zelda 2. I liked it. I, I played it years ago. I, I didn't think it was the best game on Earth, and definitely wasn't the best Zelda game on Earth, because by the time I actually sat down and, and played it mostly to the end, I never finished it. <laughs> to be honest, I got to like the last palace and just kind of gave up. But um, by that time, Link to the Past was a thing, so I was kind of comparing it to that, which was way better. But still, you know, not totally horrible. And these demon imp things are very annoying. The sword really is what you want to use against them. I was using the Hawza on them. And just kind of for fun. To see if I could do it. You do have to be precise with your attacks when you try to hit them with it. Now in my previous attempts at this ice fortress, which were mostly for the sake of writing the guide, I... It was like a lower level, I think I was like level 13 going in, ended up gaining two levels. This time I leveled up. And I'm fighting fake Megatron over there <laughs> in the worst way possible, I should have just magic him. But yeah, so um, this time I leveled up before going into the ice cave. And uh, it didn't really help me. In fact, if anything, 
I got sloppy in this fight, and I ended up using more potions at a higher level than I did when I was a lower level, so, you know, go figure. I also experimented with the weapons a little bit. If you guys remember in the previous episode, the bow was amazing. It, it really fucked, uh, what's his name, Ifrit up. This time around, it's really kind of on the same tier as the Haza, except it's a little bit faster. You can kind of stand there and just shoot it at enemies a little bit faster than you can hit them with the Haza. That's still not great, though. Now, this boss is... He changes his attack pattern once you get him down to about 50%. He'll, like, unleash that eye thing. And if you stand still, it will hit you with lightning. And I do screw up here and get hit with lightning. Um, this boss is named, uh... Frozen Horror, that's his name. Kind of appropriate, <laughs> really. Um... I don't even know what it's supposed to be. It kind of makes me think of like one of those evil trees you often see in RPGs and the like, but not quite. It has that strange mass. There are a lot of enemies in this game that are um, a little bit creepy. One of the things I like about it, I mean, this is an, an original boss. <laughs> You can say what you want about it, but it's, it's uh, original. I do eventually manage to kill him. And he's not happy about it. I thought it was kind of creepy how his eyes linger before he completely disappears. I wouldn't say this game is particularly scary or anything like that, but there are certain aspects of it that are a little... A little unsettling, I guess, if that's a good word. And we got the ice ring, which is awesome. And I don't use it. I don't know why I didn't think to use it in this episode, but I didn't. I assure you I'll be using it eventually for something at some point. It's kind of strange how you get the ice scales for the fire cave, and then you get the ice ring. I don't, I don't know what we're supposed to do with it, I'm sure we'll find enemies that are weak against ice or, you know, they'll have us build an ice bridge or some shit like that. Now, the um, puzzles in this game or are in this dungeon are actually a little bit interlocked. Like, we're going to have to do some stuff to get a door open to get that other magic point container. Of course, we got a magic crystal, which... I actually have a few of, I don't even know I was bothering to conserve my magic throughout this level. Because I just remembered that I have one. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's another magic container. I like these frozen skeletons, they're kind of cool. And, uh, the puzzle I was talking about involves them. And now we have a Hawza energy, so this thing is badass now. Um, you know, not only is it... A little bit stronger in damage than the sword, but it also has the range. I do like how they kind of balance the two weapons. The sword has a nice reach to it. It has that vertical chop. And the Hawza has a little bit of power and range. But not as fast. And as you can see, I'm not really good at pushing statues, apparently. See, I should have just fired that guy. Just killed him in a hit. And he just goes sliding around there. That patch of lighter ground is icy and will make you slide. I'm gonna kill these spear fuckers. They die very easily, so that's nice. They're probably good to grind against, or I was gonna say grind on. I don't know if that's a good choice of words, but they do die easily and they give a fair amount of experience. Now we are backtracking here because we gotta go all the way back up to that third floor and drop down a hole to get to the magic point container. 
we gotta kill this guy first. It's kind of embarrassing how he hit me so many of times. I'm not too sure how I feel about this part with the backtracking. It's not a big deal, and it is for an extra item. But I felt like it was a lot to go for, to go through for just magic points. I think they should have put the Hawza upgrade where the magic container is, because it's a better reward. I mean, sure, it's nice to have some magic points, and I'm certain we're going to be burning through them eventually. But, you know, you might want to give that better item a <laughs> better hiding place. And you fall down that hole and you're taken back to the entrance. So it is convenient in some ways. In fact, this is a little bit more convenient than the fire cave was, I guess, maybe. And here we have another molester monk coming out. A young wizard rushes into the room. Oh, he's a wizard. He's a molester wizard. Cough, cough. You there, wait a minute. I don't know, don't touch me, buddy. There's a big problem at the Kier Temple. He takes a deep breath and continues. I am Cliff, a disciple. Demons attacked the temple's entrance, so I fled here. How brave. I fear that something terrible has happened. I wonder. Please go to Kier Temple and help the others. The warp zone in back will take you there. And take this map to guide you. Yeah, demons attacked the temple and he thinks something bad might have happened. Okay, that's some top-notch script writing. <laughs> um, there's a teleporter that we'll go in to in the next episode. I haven't even touched Kier Temple yet, so it might be a few days before I have the next episode ready. I really like the teleportation effect for it. I, there's so many teleportation effects in this game, it's... It's weird, there's like two for this guy, or three, because he has a teleport that he used to get here. Then he has a standard teleport when you sp stand on the spinny star thing. And then we're going to see there's another teleport for him when he tries to enter here temple. And of course you have uh, the main bad guy has his own teleport, which is just flickering. Um... And then you have the people who disappear in puffs of smoke, so that's like, what, five different types of teleports? Very strange, some of the decisions they made when designing this game. But it's cool, it's, a, like I said, I like this game. It's different, and it's kind of like a Zelda game, almost. So, uh, has some stuff going for it, and... I'm really eager to get to the Kier Temple, so I'm going to start working on that very soon. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I will be back with more. And until next time, good luck and happy gaming.